Hi, this is Heidi from Garden Crossings and Rod and I are up here at the Northern Michigan Garden right now. And there is an area along the side of the house that is a very steep hill, probably about a 16 to 20 percent grade. It's a sandy topsoil, so it doesn't really hold water very well. And so we want to help prevent erosion in this area. So what we're going to be doing is planting a bunch of different of the feathered friends ajuga. And ajuga is a very aggressive plant that fills in spaces well. Um, some people might argue and say that's an aggressive plant that fills in space as well. So you want to make for sure when you're planting a juga that you have, there, there's a right plant for every location, right? So right plant, right location. And this ajuga is certainly, we're hoping, going to be the right plant for the location that we're working in. So our goal is to cover this whole hillside with the ajuga to help hold the soil in place. So we can kind of see the backside of what Rod's doing right now. He's digging a trench, um, but let's take a look and see what he's actually going to be doing here in a moment. So for those of you who are new to the station, I should let you know Garden Crossings is a mail order company that ships plants all over the United States. So if there's uh, any plant that you hear us talk about in our YouTube videos, you can go online to our website, gardencrossings.com, and place your order, and we'll ship it directly to your door. So let's uh, see what Rod's got going on before he tumbles down this hill. So the first step is, is Rod's removing this cable slash satellite TV um, cable that was buried here. When it was put in, it was put in a little bit on our neighbor's yard, so we want to make for sure we get it nice and snug up against our own property line so we're not, you know, on their property. So he's going to go ahead and rebury this as he's going down this steep hill. You can see it's very dry. I know you can't get the gist of just how steep this is, um, but as he's planting, you'll hopefully be able to tell a little bit um, how, how large that drop is. So from where I'm standing now to down on the grass um, over in here, I would say it's probably a good 15, 20 might be stretching it, but maybe not foot drop. So this grade is going down about 20 foot or so for sure. You can see how the sand is really light and fluffy. So that's not super great because obviously it's not going to hold the water well. Uh, but his intention for today, even though he's on vacation, he does enjoy planting. So he's going to get this side of the side of the house all planted up with a juga. So Rod, where are you going with it? Are you going like right in front of me here or just along the edge here? Yeah, I'm start the retaining wall and head down first. So his first step, and we'll see how far we get with the amount of plants that we have. These here are all our one quart size feathered friends of juga. In each of these trays, there's eight plants. So he's just going to mix the different colors and textures in. Basically the one point and sole point of what he's doing is just to hold this bank from erosion. So he's going to start here along, and I mean, look how he's standing there. Like, he's standing just to hold himself up. That's just how steep this area is. Like, he could slip at any moment and hopefully not hit a tree. Uh, so he's going to go ahead and just randomly place the ajuga along the side here of the bank. And um, we'll let him get his line buried first, and then we'll come back and check the updates as he's planting this spot. So from the downside, you can kind of see how steep this area is. Also, too, I think it gives you a little bit better feel of like the sand and the soil that he's planting into. You can also see like how he's trying just to maneuver himself down that hill without falling. As he's trying to patch the hole where the cable line came from, the soil's just tumbling down. So we'll see how this progress goes throughout the day. Definitely a day that you're working on your hands and knees and not on your feet. Plant augers getting a good workout today, that's for sure.
There's approximately 150 plants that we've brought to plant this into this location. It looks like he's spacing them about 12, probably about 12 inches apart. We certainly could do the spacing further apart, but we want instant, um, we want this to be instantly filled up. So some of the juga that we're using has thinner leaves, thicker leaves. Some of it's more the black, some of it's more the caramel color. They're already getting good runners on them and they're a nice huge full plant to start with. So that's also a nice thing. Ajuga are a low growing ground cover that can be planted in shade or sun. They're deer resistant, which is really important for us here at the Northern Michigan Garden. In the spring, they send up purple flowers. There's some of them here that are still flowering. So I want to show you the ajuga that we're using. This is all part of the Feathered Friends series. I get it out of this tray here. These plants are really filled out nicely. The first one is Petite Parakeet, and that one's got the smaller textured leaves on it, kind of that green and yellow, a little bit of copper hues to it. And uh, ajuga, you can see there's a runner right there. They like to run, which is why we're planting it on the slope because we want it to cover in the area. Next one we have here is Fancy Finch, which is also more of a fancy dainty leaf. Um, it looks similar to the Petite Parakeet, uh, but there's a little bit more of the coppery burgundy going on. You can see there's a flower starting. Maybe it's finishing. Next we have Cordial Canary, which is a more of a chartreuse green with a little hint of yellow. The coloration of these plants, if they were planted in more sun, is obviously gonna be a lot better um, than in the shade, but we're just using it for the purpose of holding the ground. You can see this one too, a lot of runners on it. Next, we have a dark foliage variety. This one's called Noble Nightingale. Deep, dark, burgundy leaves. It's got the purple flowers. You can see on the ones over there. So that's gonna give a little contrast. Those are all more that fine textured foliage. And then let's see what Rod's grabbing now. Whoa. This one is called Fancy Finch. I feel like I talked about this one already. If not, it's got more of that coppery green, a little bit deeper undertones, beautiful purple flowers. Bigger leaf version is the Fierce Falcon. Deep dark purple. Bigger leaves, glossy foliage. It's going to get the purple flowers on it. See that runner? Nice. Parrot Paradise is also a larger leaf version. Chartreuse and lime green. I guess chartreuse is lime green. Um, also little hints of yellow going on going to have purple flowers. Did that one already. Tropical toucan, large flowers, chartreuse in yellow. Beautiful plant. What's this guy here? I might have done this one already. 
yeah, that's Noble Nightingale again. So you can see how there's a lot of different uh, leaf texture going on, a lot of different foliage color. And we're just gonna blend them and mix them all in. So this will look like a colorful patchwork once it's done. How glad are you got that uh, auger there, Rod? Works good. You gotta be careful with the tree roots, but um, otherwise it works great. So if you didn't hear, I'll say it. He says it's working really great. You do have to be careful with the tree roots because obviously this is a forest and there's a lot of trees in the area. So he is paying attention to roots underneath them because you obviously you don't want to catch a root and have it um, catch your wrist. That would be injury for sure. But yeah, it's looking good. And this should really help fill that area in. We'll have to get some water to it once he's done planting. But so far, it's looking really good. You can see how he's struggling a little bit on that hill. So his first step is planting along the edge here. He's out about as far as our property line right now, so he's gonna see how far he can get uh, to the very bottom of the hill. If he's got extras, we're considering, although we might do something different, we don't know yet. Obviously, we have to go up the side there. But in this area here, the previous owner just used a bunch of random um, retaining or just, I don't know, retaining wall bricks, stepping stones, all kinds of stuff, just to try to kind of hold the the, back, the bank back. So it looks a little bit uh, very messy right now. So we've got to decide if we want to create little berms that step up, or if we want to just plant it solid with plants to hold it. That's kind of, yeah, our next step as to what, what do we want to do in that area. So here's a view from the bottom side so far. Reaching up to grab his next color choice. So far the patchwork is looking pretty good. You'll notice there's about 12 inches between the edge of the plants and then the rock retaining wall. The reason why he's leaving that space is because that's where our water line and our cable line runs through, so we don't want to get any closer to the edge of the bricks there. These plants will naturally fill in up to the edge with no problem. So even though there's that space there, it'll fill in probably by the end of the summer. I wouldn't be surprised. If you don't have a plant auger already, that is one of the most time-saving tools available. We'll put a link below the video so you can uh, read more information about it but if, if you do a lot of planting and have tricky soil or even if you have easy soil but just want something to give you a, a help with getting things planted that auger is amazing you just have to have a drill so it hooks onto a drill Any brand of drill will work. Again, the spacing is about 12 inches apart. He's a very clean planter. Make sure to put his pots and his tags away after he's done planting everything. If this were me, they'd be all over the place and I'd have to pick them up when the job is done.
planting with a soft arm. That way when he's hitting a root, he's letting his arm twist. It's not the drill wrenching it. One thing he could do is loosen up the torque so that when it hits a uh, stem, it just doesn't spin. Now he's kind of scuffing up the soil a little bit to loosen it. It's kind of where the grass is sort of ending. So he's breaking up a little bit of those grass roots that still remain. This tool that he's using, it's just, what is that tool called, Rod? It's a weeder that you just kind of run through the soil and it breaks up the soil, breaks up the roots. He said he's always referenced it as a hoe, but not a normal hoe. But I think weeder is actually in the name of the tool. Now he's just taking a rake to rake out some of that grass, pushing it off. Now we might find that some of this grass grows up through the ajuga, which whatever, it's fine. It's gonna be a transition, but I have a feeling the ajuga probably will overtake the grass. Interesting. Using the drill sideways to cultivate the soil. Look how slick that's working. Again, be careful for roots. kind of like a rototiller. <laughs>